Hi, and welcome to the Boat Princess podcast. My name is Nikki Vo, and I'm your host. I am a boat owner, a marina owner, a director on the Marina Industries Association, and a huge advocate for boating. In this series, I'm sharing the stories from every nook of the boating industry with the intention of encouraging more women to join me and for more women to get behind the helm too. I want to share the experience and opportunities of boating, of the boating industry, and I want you to join me as I bring the conversations and answer all the questions you've had. Boating is not just for the glamorous and rich and famous. It's full of beautiful and interesting people making the most of our natural environment and getting out there, enjoying the waterways. So let's set off the lines, take over the helm and escape to the world of boating. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Boat Princess podcast. I am here with a rather fabulous woman, actually. (laughs) Keep going. (laughs) Her name is Debbie Lenderts, and she is a partner, but also director of Yacht Charter and Crew Recruitment at Chapman Yachting. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you for having me (laughs) on a glorious day. (laughs) I know. And the best thing is, guys, we're sitting on a super yacht for this this lovely interview. So um, super yachts are a perfect location for a podcast interview for the Boat Princess, I reckon. Perfect location for a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) That is so true. (laughs) We are on board Element in Sydney Harbour, um, just sitting at the bay. Um, I don't think super yachts have to move to be fun, do they? They're... Absolutely not. No. I sit on this quite often with a glass of wine. I mean, working um, <laughs> and it doesn't move and it's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, because it, it puts you in that natural mood of, mm. of happiness, doesn't it? I think water does. Just being around water is happiness for me on a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> love that. So is that why you got into this industry? Because you love the water or? Do you know, I'll be completely honest with you. I was never a fan of the water. Um, I didn't even know about the industry um, until I was 27. But late in the game, I know, trust me, I wish I had found it a lot sooner. Uh, I actually found out by the industry through a friend of mine who I was living with at the time. I actually started another business uh, and that didn't end too well with my partner taking off with all the money. Oh, no. (laughs) So I had no idea what I was going to do. I moved back to Sydney, moved in with my friend. It was actually her boyfriend who had done yachting for 10 years, sat there and goes, I'll tell you what you're going to do. And for the next four or six hours, he literally sat there and told me about yachting. A week later, I went and did my SDCW course. Yeah. And a week after that, I flew to France. I thought I was going to be gone three months. I didn't come back for 10 years. <gasps> yeah. That's quite a story we're going to have to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I didn't know, but I didn't love the water to start with, but now you can't get me away from it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's go back a little bit. You uh, grew up in New Zealand, right? I did. Yeah. Very much Kiwi. Um, and in Auckland, correct? Auckland, yeah. Yes. City of sails, yeah. funny enough, but okay. never went on a sailing boat in my life. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you went to school there. You went to college there. Mm-hmm. Or where did you go Where did you go to college? I did. I, the college was called Pakaranga College. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just a public school. Um, I was definitely one of those people that did not like school. Um, think back in those days, they taught you it was some one way or the highway I took the highway because I just wasn't, I just didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy school. And I actually ended up leaving at the age, I think it was just before I was 16. Wow. Okay. So this is, this is something, a nice angle for us to look at because not every woman or every man going into the boating industry necessarily has a degree. And I think, I I think we need to share that because um, not all of us enjoy education. It, It is very staid and it's very, it has its certain, procedures and some of us just don't suit that style of learning right so so what um what did you hate about school oh everything (laughs) (laughs) I think 
got ADD. Look, I think back in those days, and we're going back 20 odd years, yeah, yeah 20, 30 odd years, they, they only taught you one way. And I just wasn't learning. So you were getting frustrated, yes. you know. And I'm, listen, I definitely wasn't in the smart class. Um, and I think that's very different now how they teach you, depending on what schools, you know. They actually go, okay, well, you'll learn this way, which is visual, or you can learn this way, which is, you know, reading it or whatever. So I think that's that's very different now but back then it, it was really if you didn't learn the way they taught that was it yeah you, you didn't learn and and I hated that and I was getting frustrated I always say to people I'm not a classroom girl I'm a life girl yes you put me in life situations I reckon I'll out test anyone yeah put me in a classroom and I will freeze and get anxiety and I hate it and yeah yeah yeah, so that's really motivating for women who are like that mm. listening to this, you know, because um, you are incredibly successful in what, you know, what you're doing now. Thank so, you. So it's it's wonderful to hear that there are different pathways, you know, that you don't have to go down the traditional educational route to get to be where you are now. So you started your career in telecommunications, am I right? I did, yeah. Yeah, um, God, that was a long time ago now. <laughs> I did. I worked for many big companies, um, God, Commander, T uh, Telstra, Optus, Vodafone. I think I went oh, through you did them the all. Whole, the whole I did, yeah. you know. It was just nice to put your toe in every option. <laughs> um, look, I was also, like I said, I wasn't very good at school, but when it came to life, I always seemed to make my way up the chain um, very fast, as I did in yachting. You know, I would start out as a sales rep, and in every single role I ended up as a sales manager, um, you know, looking after a team of people. So it was more success outside of school than it was in. Yeah. 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 There you go. And then, like you say, you had that conversation with somebody in Sydney. Yeah. And um, and you came into the world of yachting. But you said you had a business before that. What was your business before that? Yeah, that was the biggest mistake ever. That was... <laughs> an installation business yeah <laughs> with a friend of mine uh, that we moved to the you know it was in Sydney moved to the Gold Coast when the government sort of brought that scheme out anyway we were doing that and yeah that was a time in my life I'd probably like to forget yeah um but yeah when I learned about yachting I reckon I had five hundred dollars to my name if that wow and I remember begging my mum for the money to go and do the course she actually said no to me to start with, but Ben rang me back and said, you know what, it's education. I'll give it to you, but you've got to pay it back, which is fair enough. Yes. And then I had to ring my cousin and beg her for the, um, the money for the ticket to get to uh, France. And luckily when I got there, a friend of mine knew someone there that set me up with them so I didn't have to sort of pay for accommodation. And I was very lucky. And there is one rule in yachting that everyone should know and know that it happens. Yeah. When you are on your last dollar, your last leg, you think nothing's going to turn out every single time it will. And it's funny the amount of yachties or people in yachting that I speak to that go, oh, my God, the same thing. You know, as a greenie, you go in there and you're like, oh, God, I've got the last, I'm down to my last dollar, you know. I can't afford another night at the hostel or whatever it was. And then somehow something pops up. And I, I reckon 99% of the yachties that I speak to agree with that, that statement. So that's quite a moment that you've, you know, you've, you've been there with nothing and you've had to start all over again. Oh, 100%. 100% yeah. yeah. I, I literally remember going to Café Le Bleu in Antibes, putting my CV up and looking at going oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do if this doesn't work. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. 30 minutes later, I got a phone call from a captain. I went to the interview that day and the next day I started. Wow. So yeah. you had no experience no in experience. at all and None. you went straight into that as a – First year, second, uh, second stew. Yeah, second it was on stew. the thirty-five meter in Antibes. I was there was the chief stew um, Agata. I still remember her name. She was actually my only ever chief stew. Okay, I worked for that boat for six months, and after that, I moved up to chief stew. Wow, very good quickly. Learner. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she must have been a good teacher. She was amazing. She is yeah. still in yachting to this day, actually. Fantastic. Yeah. Good on you, Agata. Yeah. So, um, so when you did that first six months. What do you think uh, you learnt first up? What was the, the first thing you remember sort of was different for you that you hadn't really understood before you got into yachting? 
Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget I learned that the guest bedroom that I was told was the twin room was not the crew room. That was a wide awakening when I got back to the boat to drop my bags off that they showed me the crew room. I was like, oh, no, no, I thought the twin guest room was the, the crew room and I wondered why everyone had such an issue with the crew rooms. <laughs> That was the biggest mistake <laughs> when I first started. Um, but look, after that, it's it's tolerance. It's it's a lot of hard work. Like yeah. yachting was the best 10 years of my life. But we were working 19-hour days. We were working 30 days straight without a day off. Um, and you're living in close quarters with people. You're tired. But then when you get that big envelope at the end... <laughs> It makes it all go away. <laughs> Below decks moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the golden handcuffs. Ah. I tried to leave yachting four times. Yes. And every single time I'm like, nah, I ran out of money. Time to go back yachting. Because, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it is a good earn, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but as you say, it's incredibly hard work at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the teams that you worked with and and that time you spent on the yachts what was what was the best part of being on the yacht with all those people and having that time with them the one thing that i loved um i spent most of my career in the caribbean and the med the bahamas um was that everyone on the yacht was in my situation you know, and normally I know below deck and anyone who's listening because of that, uh, you know, they want to get out and they just want to leave each other or they want to fight. That wasn't us. No. We were like planning trips together. We're like, right, okay, we're going to be here. Where are we going to go on this day trip? What are we doing there? It was the fact that everyone understood what you did for work, um, you know, that you were in and out of whatever location. You know, we could be in a shipyard for six months and see everyone and then take off. But the yachting community is close. Everyone knows each other. And it is a small world. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great because everyone understood your lifestyle. And it goes back to that money thing as well. Everyone was able to afford the lifestyle you wanted to live because they were living the same one. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. 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 That's very cool. And the places you must have seen. You wow. must have seen some beautiful parts of the world. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? <sighs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what I don't have a favorite part because when I was in the med, it was all about seeing stuff at the shore, like St. Bart's and things like that. You know, that was amazing to go see. But then when you're in the Caribbean, it was more about the water and diving. So I learned to dive while I was on yachts. Okay. Um, so every location gave you something different. So I don't have a favorite part. My favorite part was yachting. Yeah. 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 Because you're in a beautiful environment all of the time, right? Yeah. On the yacht. Exactly. Yeah. My favourite thing would be I would, I would try always put myself on earlys because I'm a I'm an early riser, and I remember just being in the Bahamas and every morning I'd just wake up, go sit on the bow of the boat, watch the sunrise. It was peaceful and just sit there and soak it in. I remember saying to myself, when you're no longer on yachts, remember this moment, and I do. And it's a bit crazy. I'll sit there and go back to there, going, oh. Oh, take me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Guys, we are here at um, on Element at uh, Jones Bay Wharf. So you can hear, you know, trucks backing up and cranes moving around and all those sorts of things. I can hear them in my headphones. So I'm assuring you can hear them. Um, but it's a working marina. So, you know, it adds atmosphere to our podcast because um, that's what we do. We work in marinas, which is a, a pretty special place to work in marinas. So we're very lucky like that. So um, tell me about how your current position came about. So you've been overseas, you've been doing mm -hmm. yachting for what? Ten years. Ten it was, years. Yeah, it was just under ten years. Um, look, I love the industry. I, well, I'm so upset I didn't find it earlier and that's the biggest regret and that's the biggest piece of advice I will give to anyone. Do not put it off. Go as soon as you can because you do get to an age, I think as a female, where you do get a little bit too old to stay in the industry and with my mouth it gets a little bit, <laughs> I can't control it so I have to leave. <laughs> But I, I loved the industry and I was sitting there going, right, what do I do? When I learned about it, when I got told from my friend's partner, there was no one to give you information about yachting. Yeah. And I'll never never forget that. And anyway, I did have that. He put me in contact with this chief stew 
who went out of her way and now doing recruitment, trust me, to explain to someone what you have to do, the courses, where you have to go, what visas you need. There is so much involved and it takes so long. And I never forget the help that she gave me. And I remember saying, if I ever, you know, get into this industry and I leave, that's what I want to do is I want to help people find the industry. So, you know, I was just sitting in my cabin one day going, right, you know, I want to do charter, I want to do recruitment. And funny enough, through a couple of those years, I actually came back to Australia uh, to work on a yacht here. Uh, we were in the wet Sundays and I actually met my business partner, Cooper Chapman. Um, he was a captain on another boat uh, while he still had his management and maintenance business. For about a year and a half, we were talking back and forth as to, you know, I said, hey, look, I want to come home, but I want to start, you know, recruitment. He said, great, I wanted to talk to you. Actually, you know, I want to look at something to do with charter. But as always, I was never ready to leave yachting. So it was a year and a half of like, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, we'll chat. Anyway, I hadn't been home in 14 years for Christmas with my family. Wow. Yeah, mum and dad weren't too happy with that one. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, <laughs> Um, and so I came back and Cooper and I actually met, funny enough, in Sydney Airport and we sat in his uh, work queue and spoke for about an hour and a half, two hours. No way. About what we want. Funny enough, he got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you know Cooper, you know that's funny. <laughs> yep. um, and we just sat there and spoke about what we wanted. And do you know, it was one of those things. I, I served these millionaires and billionaires for so many years. And I would. I'd pick their brain. Like, you know, how did you get to where you are? What are you doing? They all said the same thing to me. You'll never, you know, you'll never be rich working for someone else. Yeah. Um, and then they told me the hard part of it, of the first few years, of what you've got to do when you want to work for yourself. Um, so, yeah, it was. it sort of came about from that. I decided, you know, had this chat with Cooper. We decided, look, let's give it a go. And I moved back for three months and we put it, sort of put everything together, like, you know, the charter boats, the website, started seeing if it could work. Then it became winter. So obviously it gets very quiet in winter here in Sydney, uh, unless you go north to the Whit Sundays. And I went back to America and just, you know, on my breaks or whatever, I would, you know, follow up with what we're doing. And then, yeah, I just in October, that was in March, I went back. And then by October, I moved back full time and it has just gone from strength to strength. It's been crazy. It's been seven years now. Wow. Yeah. That's gone so quickly. You're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. gone so quickly. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I find it funny when you say that uh, Sydney is so quiet in winter because as a POM, right, yeah. um, it's like 22 <laughs> degree, two degrees in winter and I'm going, why are there no boats out yeah. on the harbour? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a glorious sunny day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in England we'd be in a bikini right now. 100%. Not here. <laughs> no. See, I, I'm still, I still feel the cold. I mean, people here will sit here and, you know, shorts and T-shirts. I've got jumpers and Ugg boots on because I'm like, was climatized to the Bahamas and the Caribbean for so long. <laughs> I love that for you, darling. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so you've started this business with Cooper. Um, it's working incredibly well for you. You focus on the charter area of the business, don't you? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Cooper's had his business since 2008. He's, uh, you know, looks after maintenance and refits and, and private vessels. So when we started chatting and what I wanted to do was recruitment and charter. So I look after those two divisions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that's Sydney Charter, you know, Wet Sunday, South Pacific. Nice. Yeah. And I've seen your reviews. Yes. <laughs> You've got... Uh, She's got five stars, guys, and uh, it includes things like um, uh, incredible attention to detail and uh, going above and beyond and so easy to deal with and so personable and so friendly and so helpful and, and all those sorts of things are mentioned in your reviews online. Um, it clearly shows that you build a relationship with your clients and that, and that they enjoy working with you. Tell me about some things you do to to do that do you know what i'm not the i'm not the normal straighty 180 business person i am me and i am not apologetic for it i will joke more often than i'm serious i will yeah i i think it's just my personality i know there's you have to be professional in some situations and i have to remind myself when they are <laughs> um but i get to like no one wants to deal with a robot 
And because I do love the industry and I get excited for people to hold, hold an event on a yacht or, you know, if it's their first time or if they're planning a weekend, like I just, I, I love that part of it. I know what it's like. I've worked on yachts and I've been served on yachts and it's just, yeah, I just be me. And I think that goes a long way with people when you don't sit there going, you know, be, being a robot and giving them the answers they want. Yeah. I will be straight up with clients. Yeah. And if some clients have wanted a certain boat, I've gone, oh, hell no. And I will be honest with them as to why, because it's not for them. That boat may be for someone else, but it's not for them. Yeah. Yeah. I think and they appreciate that. That's actually a really important point, actually. Um, different yachts are suited to different events, which is why it's mm. great to have such a selection of charter yachts available, right? Because they're all... They're all perfect for different scenarios. Absolutely. So um, that's, yeah, part of that knowledge of yachts specifically and understanding mm. the capability of a yacht, the capacity of a yacht, the kind of feel of a yacht as well mm. um, is quite incredible. Yeah, so yeah. it's really useful knowledge. That chief stew knowledge that you have, how do you think, what do you think that brings to the table for charters for you? Look, I think one of the biggest things, and when when we first approached yachts and said, hey, we're going to start a charter division, one of the biggest things was I went to those captains or the, the central agent or the broker and said, just an FYI, I've been a chief steward around the world for 10 years. I get yachts. I get boats. I get what clients are looking for. And at that time, there were not many brokers that had ever stepped foot on a yacht as a crew member. Mm. So every, you know, every boat that we went to was like finally someone who will understand or know the expectations of a client or, you know, can go, right, no, this yacht's not going to be preferable for a 30-person sit-down meal, you know. So I think that goes a long way and just being able to walk on a boat, go, great, okay, understand the client's requirements, what the event is about and go, you know what? this is the boat you need to look at yeah 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 so there was a term that you used there that we need to explain to our listeners potentially mm -hmm. central agent what does that mean Aha. Uh -huh. So the way Australian yachts are run very different to they are around the world. So let me explain Central Agency for Australia. Um, the yachts here, and there's probably about um, 130 on the harbour that are available for charter. Um, now you can go to a boat directly, you can go through a company, you can go through the captain. Uh, each boat is run very differently. Um, we as a central agent for Element and a, another yacht called Shadow, we represent the yacht on harbour of the half of the owner. Um, so anyone, it doesn't matter if it's an agent selling the boat on behalf of their client, if it's a direct client, they come through us. Um, to organize the charter. Um, the big difference with Chapman Yachting is with the both the vessels that we're central agency for is we also look after the management for them. So because we have full-time staff that look after the maintenance, the wash down, the care of the yacht, there's actually no need for full-time crew on these boats. We run it a very different way. But yeah, as the central agent, we look after all the bookings, all the log uh, charter logistics of the charter. Um, yeah. Because that that is a big difference because a lot of super yachts have full-time crew and that is an expensive element of the ownership of that yacht so if you're providing that whole service for them that mm. takes a lot of the the worry and and the concern from the owners about the yacht because they know you're taking care of it but you're also creating some income for them at the same time absolutely so, look typically when you have a management style like ours, and I mean, look, with, uh, you know, the way that the business has grown, where we do have the management, we have the crew on the ground, you know, I think there's 15 full-time guys at the moment. Uh, we have the charter business with the girls in the office 24-7. So it's typically 50% less to run a yacht under management like ours than having full-time crew. And then you've got charter brokers like us who it incentivizes us to put charters on the boat where, you know, sometimes if the crew are there and they have to do a charter, crew work hard. Yeah. And, and I, I know that firsthand, you know, the last thing they want to hear is us ringing up going, hey, we've got another charter in four hours for you. So <laughs> you know what? It keeps people around longer. 
Um, you know, people aren't worn out or burnt out. So, and I think it's really good for the way yachts are run in Australia, a very good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You mentioned something there that I, I know um, the industry is a little bit focused on at the moment. And I've seen some brilliant work by Kelly Captain Kelly Gordon, for example, mm-hmm. online on that burnout and that um, that the crew do work very hard and she's doing a lot of work in that mental health space Mm. um so that that fact that you're moving the staff around from one boat to another and they're not just on one do you think that helps with that absolutely i think look once again the way australia crew for these you know commercial vessels that are doing four and five hour charters on the harbor during peak season twice a day like that's that's crazy for anyone you know you're doing 12 13 hour days and some yachts take up to 100 people so you're dealing with 100 people for four hours you've got an hour and a half to clean the boat change it around then you have to deal with another 100 drunk people for four hours (laughs) so yeah they can get burnt out and you know peak season starts around look end of october is when all the big super yachts come back from the wit sundays so like november december january these big yachts can be out twice a day seven days a week yeah yeah it gets tired you know and the crew that have been around for a while they you know and they do it year in year out and they possibly go up to the wit sundays do a busy season up there it does Mm. It really can burn you out. I, mm. I've seen it firsthand. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's you've got to keep a a cap. I guess the blue the water does help. You know that, that <laughs> yeah. the, the, the fact they're in the beautiful environment there does. But I, I you know I, I say to my team and and the crew team would be exactly the same. Our team at Waterside Bistro. Um, every time you go out into the front of that restaurant, you're on a stage and you're having to perform um, to your guests and make their world as happy as possible um, because that's that's your job, right? Mm. Um, how do you how did you manage that as a, a chief stew? Because you're you're on it all the time <laughs> and you've got to you got to look as if you're you're feeling good about it. How were there some strategies you used for that? Yeah, at the end I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I went probably time to look for something else. Um, look, the fact that you are in a different place every morning, you know, where am I today? I'm in Santorini. Where am I today? I'm in Croatia. Like the fact you would wake up every morning, I would go, I could go to bed tired and grumpy, but when you open that crew door, you walk out, you're like, wow. Not many people get to do this. Okay, a lot of yachties get to do it. Yeah. But, you know, I had to have so many people message me going, I'm living my life through you, you know. So it was those moments that you took to remind yourself this is not something ordinary. This is an industry where people get to experience that other side of living. Yeah. It really was. And, you know, I was lucky. I had great guests and owners. I enjoyed every day. You know, we would go and have fun with them. I remember I was on a boat for about two years um, um, and it was a private only boat and it was an older couple and I'm still, I still actually talk to them today. I absolutely love them. And we were in the Bahamas for six months and if they went out to dinner, we went out to dinner with them. If they wanted to go snorkeling and go feed the pigs, we would go feed the pigs with them. Like we got to experience everything they were doing. So I think, yes, there were days that I was scrubbing toilets and, you know, making beds and hating life, but I never took the good times for granted. Yeah. And the amount of times I would sit back and go, just remember this when things aren't going well, you know. So, yeah, I think it was just never taking anything for granted. And if you enjoy what you do, you're never going to have a bad Well, Yeah, you can't have a bad day. That's a lie. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but when you, when you love what you do, there's going to be good days and bad days, but the good days will always outweigh the bad. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can always see a positive in some, yeah, that in some way. Envelope it's it's looking for that positive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it is it is kind of taking in the environment that you're in, isn't yeah. it? And and being grateful for that and saying, wow, not everybody like you say, not everybody gets to do this. I know my uh, my team at Waterside Bistro do a very simpler version of that. Some of them actually go down to uh, the marina at the end of the day and they put their feet in the water oh, and, I love they, that. and they just you know they just look at the water and say. Look at where we work. Yes. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is that that moment of positivity and taking that, I guess, that moment to look back and say, no, hang on, Ch- check out where I am. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> in fact, we've just opened our second office, at, as you know, at the Roselle Soup Yacht oh, Marina. Um, I don't know if you ever saw our original office, the OG, and um, we still have it. It's great. Uh, management and um, refit and all of that is done out of there. But we were literally in a, I mean, it would have been a nine by two, you know, little office down at Point Piper Marina because it was really only just Cooper and I. And now we're in this stunning floor to ceiling glass office that overlooks the soup yacht at the marina. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I've definitely put my feet up on my desk and had a glass of wine sitting there going, wow, you know, this is where I get to look at every day. This is where I get to come. And th that's been a real moment for me as well since starting the business. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've had our marina for 17 years now. Yeah. I still have to pinch myself yeah. when I go down there sometimes thinking, wow. That, that, so that's our marina at Bobbin Head. And then I go up to our other one at Lake Macquarie and go, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we have amazing teams looking after both of them. But um, but yeah, it, it really is a privilege to work it is. in this. Yeah. And, and as long as you take that grateful privilege approach, um, I think you'll never. You, you, yeah, you have your bad days, you have your tough days, you have your oh, hard yeah. days. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, the other people are not in that environment when they're doing those tough days. No. So, but I look at that also. And the, the one of the big things, got is some. You know, I would come back you know, every few years and see people and catch up, I got over it because they went to the same office, nine to five job, they mm -hmm. sat in a cubicle or did whatever, and I would find every time I come back, it was just me speaking for five hours because they're like, oh, and then what did you do? And then where did you go? I'm like, well, what about you? Oh, no, nothing was different. And I, I look back and go, you know what? My bad days were better than their best days. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So talking of conversations, mm. that conversation you had with a guy that said you got to get into yachting. Yeah, Wayne. Wayne, who, why did that happen? Why did that conversation happen and what made you? Look, he he was in yachting for 10 years prior to me doing that. He had actually left and he knew the industry. Yeah. He knew, you know, and I actually only just sort of met him, but, you know, his his partner at the time was a very close friend of mine for 25 years. Um, and I guess well, you do have to have a personality to be in yachting. You know, you do have to be a strong person. But he just sort of told me about this crazy world, and I thought he was I thought he was lying to start with. I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, you get to do this, and this is how you travel, and they pay you all this money. You don't have to pay rent, and chef cooks are meal for you I'm like sign me up <laughs> um but yeah I don't know I think I was just lost in what I wanted to do and you know within 10 minutes of him starting to speak of it I think my eyes were like boggling open my mouth was dropped I'm just going tell me more yeah yeah and talking a crazy world what's the craziest request you've had from a a charter guest or an on when you were chased uh, you a, a, a guest I had one guy that we were in the Bahamas he had a craving for caviar. There was no caviar in the Bahamas that, well, there was, but not the one he wanted. Um, and he asked me to organize uh, the caviar to be flown in from America on a private jet by itself to the island. We had to send the tender for a four-hour run to go and pick it up and then bring it back for his dinner that night. Wow. But that, for his entree. That brings cravings to a whole new level, doesn't I it? know. <laughs> First world problems. I'll be there one day. <laughs> From the PJ to the SY. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> there you go. That's even craving. I don't think I've ever had a craving for caviar. That, that's that's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm going to have to work towards that. That was yeah. just a flex, I'm sure. Yeah. He dropped the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I know you've done an incredible amount of events on Sydney Harbour with some real incredible detail and, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of um, exciting things you've had to organize and fun things you've had to organize give us some good examples of those that you've done oh I have a few and they've all been so much fun so stressful but fun I think the original one we did was Red Bull and Holden um, and we literally organized a barge in the middle of the harbor with the two latest super race cars to be unveiled by the Red Bull team uh, then we had a super yacht pull up beside it with all the media and everything so that was pretty cool to put two brand new supercars in the middle of the harbour amazing um so that was definitely you know you can't just do that 
You yeah. can't just take out a barge and put it in the harbour and have some cars locked on. So that was very cool. That was a really big event. Um, lots of moving parts there. Then we um, did the season kickoff of the NRL. Um, so once again, putting a barge out in the middle of the harbour and the NRL captains all kicked off a um, rugby ball over a goalpost. So we literally set up a fake goalpost in the middle of the harbour for them to kick balls over. So yeah, <laughs> I should do. <laughs> That was very cool. Uh, Another massive event, which was, oh, my God, we had such a pleasure working with Lisa from Hello, Molly. We ended up taking uh, Ghost 1 and 2. So Ghost 2 is one of the largest super yachts on the harbour with Ghost 1 um, and two tenders in formation. We literally wrapped the boats pink. No uh, way. Yeah, it was wow. amazing. So they had DJ Tiger Lily. We organized um, private fireworks. There were only I mean, you got celebrities, A-list celebrities from overseas that were brought in for this. But we literally had, yeah, the two yachts uh, going down the harbour in formation, two tenders on either side holding flags um, and then tied up, yeah, and at the end of the night the fireworks was all done. It, that was incredible and that was a long process. That was about five months in the making there was a lot to prepare for that <laughs> yeah not wrong yeah and i know roxy jacenko has had some fun with you too hasn't she uh, yeah we've done some great charters with roxy one of my favorite one was um the reef party which was for um gay pride week and roxy god love her dressed up as a drag queen um and we actually tended her out uh to the boat full of the clients and got her on there she looked fabulous i think she was in makeup for about six hours it was oh. crazy yeah yeah. Love that girl. She's so driven and she's worked so hard to get where she is Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant woman. Love her energy. She's uh, she's really fiery. Love she that. is. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Yeah, great girl. So um, what do you think the future holds for Chapman Yachting? Where, where, where are you going now? Global. Global. <laughs> we love that. Um, look, I, you know, We've grown so quickly and so fast. It's been amazing. Um, I really, you know, I think I've we've only just finished building the new offers, the new website, implementing things, you know, from from inside the business. That I think I'm taking a minute just to take all of that in. Um, but look, um, national offices aren't out of reach, you know. We've always spoken about that. Um, but you know, one day we'd love to be as big as and best as Burgess, and I'm sure it can happen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, Burgess is a very strong worldwide. Um, element of that space, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So yeah, very yeah, very exciting yes. uh, to head in that direction and. And I guess for you that will involve some more travel again, which you probably miss a bit, do you? Fingers crossed. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I think it's imperative that I go to all the boat shows, the Monaco, the Cannes, the yeah. Miami. We're going to yeah. keep going to all of those. I miss travel. Yeah. You know, I'm definitely one of those people that I, I need to have a trip planned. And I think everyone sort of needs something to look forward to. Otherwise, what are you working towards? Yeah. You're just working to go to work every day or whatever. It's not like... I enjoy knowing where I'm going, new places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yachting got, let me see, a lot of the world. Now it's time to do it. Yeah. Presumably you recommend people to book a super yacht charter. 100%. Through <laughs> Chapman Yachting. <laughs> I know I know that is very important. They say, don't they, that mentally, even if you book a trip but then you don't do it, you still feel better. Really? I'm just going to book a whole lot of trips there. Yes. No, yeah. no, they do say you, actually having something to look forward to yeah. makes you feel so much better, um, even if you don't do it. Wow. Yeah, like part, of the, part of the mental growth and the mental um, benefit of that is the looking forward to. To something. Yeah, which yeah. is why it's not good to have surprise parties. It's good to have a, a party you look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, book the uh, Super Yacht Charter party so you can look forward to it, and exactly. that's part of the benefit. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> and um, tell me about Cooper. What what's you're working with her? <laughs> an unusual scenario because uh, Mark and Cooper are father and son. They so, are. So that's um, I mean, Mark's been in the business forever, thirty odd um, years. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. 
I think people have a lot of misconception about how Cooper started or what they have to do with each other. Yeah. So, yes, as you said, uh, Mark Chapman has been in the marine industry for 30 years. You know, he's had his sales division. Um, I think Cooper was about 16 when he went to his first boat and said, you know, can I wash it down and, and look after it for you? And that's how it started. And look, and I'm sure Mark had to say to the guy, hey, look, do you mind if, you know, Cooper washes your boat? But look, from that, yeah, Mark's had, uh, you know, nothing to do with Cooper's success. Cooper has been a rise and grind kind of guy since day one. Yeah. You know, he got one boat to wash down and clean and he got a second one, got a third one, got a fourth one, then got someone to help him because he started growing so much. So there's always one thing I say about, you know, about Cooper and I, I say he's the brains and I'm the beauty. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's a lot he of- <laughs> is incredible. Like everything he does is, I don't have to question it. I'll try just so he thinks I will question him. Yes. But I don't have to. Everything he does is done with um, honor and intent, which yeah. I absolutely love. Um, everything is done to its best and the highest standard. And what I'll say about that, you know, if we need uniforms, I'll be like, oh, look, we can get this cheaper option. And it's like, no. You got to go with the biggest and the best, you know, the yes. best. And you got to look like, you know, the sort of company that you are. And he's done that very well. Yeah. So he was, he looked, he had Chapman Yacht Management for eight years before I even came along. Yeah. And by that time, well, by now, he has, I think, it's 36 private yachts under management. They're wow. from like 60 to, well, now 100 foot. Um, as I said, he's got about 15 full time staff working on the ground that is doing. They're, look, and they're all getting their commercial sea time and tickets from doing those as well. Um, so, yeah, it's really – I'm very lucky to be partnered with someone so amazing. Yeah. Um, but just recently – so Mike's hasn't really had anything to do with Cooper and I. He's just sort of – he's Chapman Marine. We were Chapman Yacht Management. And about a year and a half ago, we went through a rebrand. You know, you said, where are we going? What's next? That's what was next. We were evolving. We weren't just a management company. We were – we were a yacht company so we're now chapman yachting um as i said we've just opened the second office down at roselle so cooper is you know your yacht management refit and maintenance i'm charter and recruitment and mark has just come in and sort of started the sales side of things into the super yacht um, arena so that's you know we needed the big office when when selling the big yachts (laughs) yeah fair enough fair enough yeah yeah and you can't turn down that that sales you know, acumen that, that Mark has. He's been doing it for so long. Absolutely. You know? And look, it's all it's it? all tied into it because, you know, I mean, we have a client that's been chattering with me for a couple of years and was looking to buy a yacht. Yeah. You know, so it's that sort of, it's the 360 degree. We have people that buy yachts. We look after them. Then they want to buy a bigger one. Then they need more crew. Then they need to sell that yacht. Then they need to buy the bigger yacht. So, you know, the Chapman Mod- Yachting is a true 360 company degree company that can you know from buying a yacht to crewing it to chartering it to selling it to buying the bigger one we can do every aspect of it so it's it's yeah it's really amazing yeah and 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 honestly an owner of a yacht is usually a very busy person yes um so that fact that you're taking on all of those roles for them um, to one person they can, to one company they can trust. Yeah. that That's a really nice reassuring scenario for owners, I would have thought. Well, look, I think pretty much everyone that's been with Cooper has been with him since they were 16. Yeah. You know, no one's left yeah. to go anywhere else. I mean, they've left because they've sold the boat or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, he's got very loyal customers. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine. And you mentioned uniforms, big, biggest and best, little segue there. I'm sure that was quality marine clothing. Of course, always. Of course and it was quality marine clothing. <laughs> <laughs> because they're one of my sponsors, so I have to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> they help us out. I've, I've rung Duncan on a few occasions and gone, uh, I need some scorts in about two hours. <laughs> oh, I know. Isn't he brilliant? Like oh, that? he doesn't like me very much when no. I do that, but he makes it happen. But he does so. make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scorts, by the way, guys, are very short skirts that have shorts underneath. So when you see those photos of the <laughs> the crew <laughs> girls with those super short skirts on, you think, oh, my goodness, how, does she, how on earth does she serve drinks with that on? That's how. <laughs> yeah, they're like tennis. They're like the tennis pants that you see. Yeah. Shorts, yeah. yeah, they're very, but they're very, very popular with crew, aren't they? Very. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Easy to work in and so on. 
but yeah, quality marine clothing really know their stuff and and they really can um, make things happen for yachts and mm -hmm. and make them all look amazing because they do need to look. That's the thing. You can't go cheap with uniforms on. I mean, not the quality marine uh, marine clothing are super cheap, expensive, but they're they're not of that you know that quality that standard uniforms out there mm. with the dodgy polos and all that sort of thing. People you know, don't so. pay all this big money to go on a yacht to feel like they've walked into Kmart. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no offence to Kmart, but, you know, it's the look and the feel yeah. and that's everything we do is, you know, I tell you, I always say, I will always question spending the money, but I've yeah. never regretted it when yeah. I see the outcome with everything that we do. Yeah. 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 Quality really does need to shine on super yachts. You Absolutely. Can't, you can't um, half, you know, it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're having this fabulous career. You're enjoying what you're doing. You're working with a partner that you work incredibly well with. Mm -hmm. Um what do you think is is the pinnacle of your career apart from that being that being overseas and what 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 what's your you know vision of that thing that you want to do where you're going to go all right that's it i'm there i've really done it or do you think you're already there oh look i question myself all the time I'm so hard on myself, you know, with everything that I've done. And then it takes someone to go to me. Are you kidding me? Look at what you've done. Look at where you are. And then, you know, I always feel that I've only done that because I've been able to do it with a business partner. So I'm very hard on myself, but I'm not going to lie. I don't think I'm at the pinnacle. I think there is a long way to go. But I'm not, you know, Cooper and I used to think, imagine when we get our first CA vessel. We got our um, four or five years ago. Yeah. And we're like, oh, imagine when, you know, we get our first 100-foot yacht. Now we have that, you know, a beautiful yacht called Shadow. Then we're like, you know, we used to sit in our office, sit next to each other, you know, and we wouldn't be able to throw a stone further than the door. And imagine when we get a big office. And we've done that. So I think we keep imagining what's next for us. And we keep imagining what happens. We make it happen. So I, I can't tell you what the pinnacle would be, but I've definitely had moments of sitting in the new office going, wow, I can't believe we did this. And we didn't just move in. We designed this off the, the style and feel of a 50-meter yacht. You did, um, yeah. You know, so it's it's sitting back and taking in those moments. It's taking in the moments like I really enjoyed it the other day. I've had a girl, Alyssa, who's been with me for a couple of years and unfortunately she's going back to the south of France to live. Um, and I took all the girls out for lunch and it was just that the camaraderie, the friendship, the, you know, that, that family feel that we have at Chapman that you just love. The boys, oh, my goodness, they're next level. They're all best friends. <laughs> I reckon they're all troublemakers, but they all work so hard. But I just love that family. And I, I'll be honest with you, I don't see it in many other companies that they're as close as what we are. It's work hard, play hard, you know, and, yeah, I just I, I, don't, I haven't gotten to that pinnacle, but I've had so many moments that I've just gone, wow. Yeah. yeah. But you're clearly setting your goals. You're probably saying, okay, we're going to aim for this and we're going to aim for that, and, and you're yeah. manifesting and, and making that happen. So, um, and and that's the fundamentals of a, a business. You yeah. gotta you've got to say, okay, we want to do this next, and you take the steps to get to that that Absolutely. thing that you want, right? Yeah. So, um, so tell me about those two that yachts that you're totally looking after now: Element and Shadow. And tell Shadow. Well, this is Element. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful eighty-two foot Warren. Yeah. Uh, she's twenty years old, believe it or not. Um, Warrens are Warrens. It's such a shame that Warrens is no longer I know. because they've designed the most beautiful yachts, and they're timeless. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're Quantum's the same. They're they're just gorgeous, gorgeous yachts that are completely timeless. You could, I mean, obviously you refurbish them and you look after them and you bring yeah. them up to, but. But their lines are they're beautiful. just divine. And she's divine. got the element. I mean, look, this is original carpet. We did yeah. a refit. Well, there was a refit in 2018. Yeah. Um, so she, look, she's known, best known for the four-hour charters on Sydney Harbour. So she holds up to 36 guests. Um, then we have three stewardesses, a captain, a deckhand, and a chef. She's doing upwards. When we took her over, I think she was doing about, 
24 charters a season. She does upwards of 98 now. Wow. Yeah. That's so massive. She's, um, she's getting a run for her money, that's for sure. Yeah, not wrong. <laughs> but she's a fan favourite. And, look, you know, one of the biggest things people don't realise is how affordable it is for boats this size. Like, you do a four-hour fully catered charter for 36 people. That's all food, beverages, catering, everything. You're looking at around 350 to $400 a person. Yeah. I spent yeah. that in cocktails on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> To be able to go out on the harbour yeah. for four hours, like, you know, it, it is. And you've got the catamarans that you can go out for $60 a person for four hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. I mean, that's Element Shadow. We have just taken over. Um, she's a 100-foot technomar, um, currently stripped bare in the Gold Coast. Uh, so there is a new owner. He is fabulous. He, you know, brought the boat, saw her potential. Uh, we took over the full management and the charter side of it and said, look, you know, let's go to the Gold Coast. Let's do a massive refit. So we got her up there. She's going to be there for about five months. Okay. Full respray. Um, they've literally ripped the whole top deck apart. Wow. <laughs> so Shadow also holds 100 guests okay. over the That's 36. Big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so she's having a full birthday. So spending a lot of money to put her in, I suppose, in line with the biggest competition here on Sydney Harbour yep. for those for those charters, yeah. Yeah, Sydney Harbour charters. So she's at uh, Gold Coast Sydney Marine. They're good friends of ours too, lovely, lovely people. Yeah, so we take back. all of our boats there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's um, – um, their level of experience at that uh, that fit out area is is just fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 They have all the quality tradesmen, the boys. Our guys love working with them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. really good guys up there. So um, and I guess yeah, there, there isn't that facility in Sydney. So every yacht of that size has to go to Gold Coast for that. So yeah, Gold Coast and Marine is a fantastic option for that. Oh, yes. So um, so. When do you think she'll – about five min- months, she so she's going to be ready yeah, for we just summer her, again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're hoping she's back in Sydney around August. Yeah. But if you know boats and you know shipyards, <laughs> I can't guarantee that <laughs> until she's left the shipyard and on her way here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, she's literally going to be a whole new yacht. Yeah. Um, I, I'm excited. Like, I didn't realise how much work was being done. I'm um, very excited to get her back. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, and 100 is a, a big number. for. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's very few yachts. There's probably four or five yachts on the harbour that are of the super yacht calibre mm-hmm. that can take 100 packs. Mm. So yeah. now with her under our management and all the changes and the upgrades, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because to, to rephrase myself, this the boat that we're on at the moment isn't officially a super yacht because she's not over 100 feet. Is she? No, I she's got a luxury. Wrong, didn't I? She's yes. a luxury yacht. Yeah, she's a luxury yacht. <laughs> yes, we'll call her a luxury yacht because she is. She's absolutely gorgeous. <gasps> yeah, so, um, yeah, just to explain to our listeners again, where the uh, the size of yachts determines what we call them. Mm-hmm. So a super yacht is a, must be over 100 feet. To be called a super yacht. Now, don't you love the way the yachting industry goes from feet oh, to, feet. <laughs> to meters and meters to feet and back? In? <laughs> Do you know how hard it was for me coming back to from America to Australia? Because I was everything was Americanized. I've never called a captain a skipper. Yeah. In Australia, that's what they're called. Yes. Skippers or masters. Yeah. I call them captains. And then overseas it's deck hand. Here it's a GPH, it's a general purpose hand. I still to this day, I mean, I look at a date and a time and I have to figure out if it's New Zealand or American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the Americans do it the wrong way around. The wrong way around. Yeah. 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 We yeah. of course do it the right way around. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. I've just got to retrain my brain again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there are so many terms of phrase in the yachting industry that that everybody gets used to. Like, what, what's that term when you when you book a boat and then you've got is it the APP? What, what's oh, APA, APA, Advanced Provisioning Allowance. Yeah, just yeah. just explain that to our listeners. So when you hire a boat, let's just say it's two hundred and fifty thousand for the week, that gets you the vessel and the marine crew. That's it, and a certain amount of fuel per day. So an advanced provision allowance is normally between 25 to 30% of that 250000 And that is used to buy all your drinks, your supplies, all your food, anything that you want, a private jet flying in your caviar to the Bahamas. Um, that pays for that upfront. 
Um, so that's on top of what you pay for for the week. And that normally also, when left over, is given to the crew as a tip. Okay, yeah. interesting. And then you do have to give the crew a tip as well. I wish that was so in Australia, but <laughs> not, no. <laughs> in America, yes, look, in yachting, I mean, it's not mandatory. Some contracts will actually say that it is, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, but typically you make anywhere between 10, 15, if you're very lucky, and I have been on a few occasions, 20% of what the vessel hire is. Yeah. And that's split between depending on how many crew you have on board. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because, yeah, as Australians, we're not t big tippers. We're, we're, no. we're not tippers. But, you know, I'll yeah. give it to the Australian community. There's a lot of times when even the four-hour charters, I really know we've had clients come up and be like, yeah, here's $100 each for the crew. Yeah. And that goes a long way for crew that are on casual rates. Yes, yeah, absolutely. A lot of the, the larger super yachts that do term charters, they, I would say 90% of the time are tipped as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good because it, it really, it is hard work. So, you know, it's good to reward the, the crew with that, with a grateful uh, thank you for that. I've, and Below Dex has probably helped with that because yeah. it's kind of made it very obvious that you should tip the crew. Absolutely. I tell you yeah. what, I had a client that was so onto it. I loved her. She was actually a jewellery designer. And she came to us at the start of the charter and she handed myself, I was the chief stew and the two other stews, this amazing jewellery. Oh. And then she also gave them the captain the tip. And she said, here's the tip. I want you to give it to the crew at the start. So, And it was a very nice tip. I think it was about, she was on board for five days and it was $5,000 each. Wow. Plus the jewellery. I'll tell you what, I don't think I've given someone better service than I ever have. <laughs> Just because you, you you were thankful, like yes. that was amazing. She yeah. did it right. She she was going to tip us regardless. Give yes. it to them at the start, unless you're going to yeah. stiff them. You know, yeah. Give it to them at the start. They work ten times harder. Yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> Good yeah. thinking. Ninety nine. Love that. Yeah. Well, it has been amazing talking to you, Debbie. It's been fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's Reliving fun. things. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It it is really interesting. Like that. That um, we spend so much of our time sort of. Oh, I haven't done this and I haven't and I'm yet to achieve this and I'm done. But when we actually look back at what we've achieved and we spend a moment like this on yeah. this podcast, actually thinking, gosh, I've done a lot and I've I've really achieved well and look at where I am now and all that sort of things. So I think that's really good for us. You know? It's been good. Like I said, you know, I don't always give myself the credit that's due. So thank you for yeah. showing me. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. I've got I've got another business um, called Venus Getaways, which is a girls getaways business. And I'm recognizing at the moment that it's really hard for us as women to get away from work because it's mm -hmm. it's tough. It's a little bit tougher at the moment. We've got yes. to work a little bit harder because um, people aren't spending their money what like they were spending their money on all that sort of thing because of interest rates and so on. So um, we've put together this little work away with Venus that we're putting on the site soon, which is intended for women to go to our beautiful locations I'm out. and work. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and work there just for a couple of nights, um, either with their team or by themselves and meet some other people there. Um, and I'm intending to offer them the opportunity to do a podcast interview during that with the hosted ones. Wow. Um, if they're just going with their own team, that's a different thing. But if, if they're coming to one of our hosted ones, we'll do a podcast and talk about because it is good for you mentally to actually think about what I've done and, and what I've achieved and what I've gone through, all those difficult stuff. I mean, you are a perfect example. You've gone through a very difficult part of your life in not having anything and look at you now, mm. you know. So that's that's an incredible thing to think about and go, wow, I'm, I'm quite a quite a woman. I've I've achieved a lot there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I love that idea. Sign yeah. me up. Yeah. For so. all locations. <laughs> 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 so that is good fun. Yeah. So yeah. So I hope uh plenty of women out there who may be going through one of those tough moments right now, um, look at why it's happened, what what that opportunity is out there for you, that that conversation like Debbie had with Wayne. Uh, listen out to, for those opportunities to say, mm. oh, okay, all right, that's what I'm meant to be doing and and head in that direction if you're having to change direction or you're having a tough time or whatever's, whatever's going on at the moment. Listen for the opportunity. I always say listen for the opportunities. Some opportunities come to people and they just don't hear them so they don't take them. 
Um, but listen out for it, guys, because often it can be right in front of you and a friend wants to help you and just by having a com- that conversation with you. If Wayne hadn't had that conversation with Debbie, she wouldn't be doing what she is now. So big thanks to Wayne and um, big thanks to you all for listening. Thanks, guys. Debbie, thank you so much for being here. Tell us how people can get in touch with Chapman Yachting. Um, you can go to our website, which is chapmanyachting.com. <laughs> you can send us an email at info at chapmanyachting.com. Um, otherwise, you will see many of our cars around with our numbers on them <laughs> around every marina around Sydney. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, obviously, look, follow us on Instagram, Chapman Yachting Australia and Facebook. We're across all the socials and we definitely keep you updated with what our maintenance guys are doing, the big events that we do. Um, and look, we obviously with the recruitment, anyone that's looking to get into yachting or wants to know more, we post a lot of stuff there as well. Well, you can call us and I'm happy to chat with anyone. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you. Lovely to have you here on the beautiful element on Sydney Harbour. It doesn't get any better. I'll see you on the water soon, guys. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Boat Princess podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you'd like to know more about what I do and where I am, then you can follow me on Instagram at the Boat Princess. You can also sign up to my newsletter on my website, which is theboatprincess.com. Take care of yourselves, everyone, and hopefully we'll see you on the water soon.